What's up YouTube? So I'm working on this Chevy Cobalt and um, the problem it's having is the brake pedal is very spongy. It's sinking all the way down to the floor like with ease. So when you try to stop you have no brakes at all. You have to pump the brakes quite a few times just to get it to stop. So I got it running for a few minutes. Um, turn the ignition off and if I press on the pedal you see it's a little firm so that's kind of a indication that the brake booster is um, actually holding vacuum there are other checks that you know you could do to verify that but that's just a quick check um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push in on the brakes and then see if the brakes are actually holding so at this point I'm just checking each um, wheel area make sure no fluid is um, leaking check the lines And in the rear we got drums, so we're just checking for leaks, nice and dry. Check the bottom, no leaks, no drips. Checking the other wheel, nice and dry. Passenger front, no leaks line is good and I've also checked the lines at the bottom of the car nothing on the floor it's got to be an internal leak which is going to be either the master cylinder or even the ABS module but here I wedge something between the brake and the seat so I have the brake pedal depressed all in you can see that the brake is applied lights are on now I come to the rear drum and this is the driver rear and mind you the brake is still applied you can see the light is on and just by hand it spins freely passenger side turns very easy and in the front, it's a little harder to turn by hand, but if I put a screwdriver in there, I'm able to turn it. I should be able to do that with the brakes all pressed in. That's on all four wheels. And this is the driver side. Screwdriver in, I'm able to turn shouldn't be able to do that with your brake pedal fully pressed all the way to the floor so this is kind of leading me to the master cylinder that's one of the most common thing once in a while it could be the ABS so at this stage I'm suspecting the master cylinder is bad or worse comes to worst the ABS module um, it's a few other tests and stuff that could be done so I'm probably gonna try to do those or just go ahead and change it anyway I've also went ahead and checked the the line from the booster that vacuum line from the booster right here it comes around and it goes right here to the intake it's not cracked, it's not loose, not disconnected. So I'm just gonna grab my screwdriver, go in here between the rotor and the caliper, and I release the brake. So just gonna go in like so, 
and I'm gonna pry on it and if you could look I created a gap so I know the piston in the caliper is moving and if I once I once I hit the brakes it should close right back up So you see, it closed in, not all the way, but it closed in some. It still has a slight gap. Got to tighten on this a little bit more. Actually, it is tight. Now I'm going to do that for the other side and see what happens. So now I'm on the passenger side. Put my screwdriver between the rotor and caliper and pry. See a nice gap opened up. Now I'm going to hit the brakes again. Here, you can see this one closed up. Like I said, a very small gap, but not much. So it is closing, it is moving. So that's telling me that the calipers are not seized or not stuck. Now I'll go check the rear. Now on the rear drums, I gotta get these drums off which are never easy. Yep, it's not gonna be easy. Got me a nice hammer. Okay. There are no leaks in here. No fluid dripping, nothing. So this looks good. The, the shoes may be a little bit worn, but I mean, still good enough that it should have, um, it should have been stopping it from turning by hand. So I'm definitely suspecting, like I said, the master um, cylinder. I'll do a few more checks, some more research to kind of narrow that down. And um, I'll um, let you guys know what I find. I adjusted one side already, the rear brake, the, the shoes. They got to get changed. They are cracked up. But um, right now I'm just still troubleshooting. But um, I adjusted the driver side rear and now I'm doing the passenger side and basically this gear right here when you turn this uh, one direction what it does it takes both um, shoe and it spreads them apart so if they're like so it pushes them further apart so when the drum goes over it they are closer to the drum so as soon as you hit the brake they don't have a lot to expand so I'm doing it from inside turning it right here like so as you can see just upwards but the way to do it once the drum is on 
is to go from the rear and there's a slot in the back that once you stick your flat head in you can see it come out right here but you stick your flat head screwdriver and you're trying to turn the gear from behind so you want to be very gentle to find the gear you'll feel it once the screwdriver touches it and then you could actually turn it from the rear and if you look closely you'll see it spinning and that's me turning it from the rear so you do that once the drum is on and you should have some friction not a lot but you should have enough friction as to where you should be able to spin the drum but you should feel some kind of force as you're spinning but I think this whole rear and hardware and everything needs to be changed so I'll put the drum on not spinning as freely as before stopping pretty quickly could use a little more tension on it well a little more friction so to give you an idea this is the hole right here in the back so I go in with the screwdriver I feel around for the gear and I try to push the gear down so I could spin it. Take some patience, but once you get maybe three, four turns, then you could actually spin the drum and you're going to see you're gonna start feeling more friction and you just keep adjusting until you spin the drum and it should maybe give you a half a turn and stop so just a little bit more it's harder doing it this way because you actually cannot see the gear but you have to do it this way because the drum has to be on it. 